What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and I have one banger of a build video for you guys today. If you are struggling with a Magnum PvP build, don't worry, your boy Horcrux has got you covered. This is a little off meta, don't go spreading the word, right? This is truly the jack of all trades when it comes to Magnum PvP builds. It does duels, it does open world, it does battlegrounds, it does solo play, it does group play everything extremely well so again if you're struggling to find a build i think this is the video for you so without further ado fellas let's hop into the video welcome back ladies and gentlemen and before we hop into the bread and butter of this thing i just keep in mind i do have a few other build videos that i've been working on that i'm going to be releasing here in the next couple of days so if you want to be notified for that please like and sub and hit the little uh, bell notification icon so let's go ahead and hop into the character sheets uh, real quick here so this is obviously magden this is a, a ranged in this is literally one size fits all jack of all trades you can run this a multitude of ways there's all kinds of different setups that you can run i tried to do something a little off meta instead of the the whole 42k health polar winds kill bot to build i i actually despise it and i i hate it you, you don't really do anything you just kind of feel like a slug you just exist right you just don't die but you don't really kill anything uh this is not that this is like one of the most aggressive magnum builds that uh that you're going to run so uh, here's the character sheet, everything completely unbuffed, we're specking everything um, into Magicka. So uh, we are running the Apprentice. If you are struggling with Sustain, um, you can obviously swap this to the Atro because the Magden does inherently struggle with Sustain. We do have incredible amount of Sustain, but it takes a little bit, uh, a little bit to ramp up. And if that's uh, not hinting toward one of the sets that we're running, then I don't, I, I don't know what is, but it's probably, probably one of the best monster sets. Um, in the game right now if you're struggling with sustain uh, it, it's absolutely phenomenal so uh, we are a breton on this boy i i do think breton is um up there it, it's tough to not be breton anything with cost reduction is going to help you out a lot because on the magnet you do have to spend a lot of your time buffing and rebuffing yourself and that is going to eat into your resources it's not like a sorcerer to where you can toss on crit storage lightning storm and just go to town you have to keep four or five buffs up and if you're not able Able to keep them up you're just going to get squished okay so having a decent amount of cost reduction and also mag recovery is quintessential our mag recovery gets up to around 2500 with continuous attack and serial i'll explain how we do all that in just a moment but yeah here's uh, the rest of the character sheet uh, nothing too impressive kind of buff everything up just kind of give you guys a, a baseline of uh, what we're working with here uh, we got uh, here's our resistance is 25k 22k uh, weapon and spell damage uh, you all gonna take a screenshot you know whatever our health gets up to around uh 31k i tried i tried to get it lower than that but there's just no <laughs> no way of doing it <laughs> our spell resistances however are through the roof it's 35k and physical resistance 30k respectively with a decent amount of crit resist since our res resistances are so high it kind of helps offset that crit damage that we're, we're kind of lacking like a running rallying cry i think most magdens nowadays are running rallying cry i don't think you have to run it um but uh, that's just my opinion right so uh, let's go ahead and hop into the sets we're running. So again, I'm going to explain this in a multitude of ways. You don't have to run this so in any one set way. It's very easy to interchange sets, very easy to interchange uh, abilities. So uh, here's what I come up with, and this is what has worked best for me, uh, best for me. And this is from the perspective of a solo. 1vxer right so battlegrounds it might be a little bit different if you're in group play it might be a little bit different so just tailor it to your locking so i'm running the master's perfected ice staff charge with the frost damage enchantment um the magden gets a lot of benefits from applying the brittle stats effect it actually does hit really hard and i have charge on this because we do have a lot of other synergy on the build that um really amplifies our stats effect damage so having charge on this i've done a little bit of dps testing it is better than sharpen uh, just because of the chill proc that you get from your passive it does an absurd amount of damage so the perfected version is going to give you 103 weapon spell damage and then this is also going to be your spammable right so it's going to reduce the cost of destructive touch which is what we're using a destructive reach because it actually hits harder we'll cover that and gives you 600 raw weapon and spell damage so uh, the reason this is so strong because it's going to help you with your healing and your damage and your burst 
So uh, this is really good. Alternatively, if you wanted to go more of a pressure build, you could run the uh, Scion's Ice Staff and use Crushing Shock as your spammable instead. If you want a little bit more single target pressure, by a little bit, I mean kind of a lot of it, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, this this is pretty pretty good. There are a few setups if you really wanted to go really cancerous dot setup with this. You could do something like Drogrigan, Dragon's Appetite. And the asylum staff and you can do like a pressure then you know single target it's uh, it's very very oppressive arguably the strongest dueling class in the game right now um if you run the asylum uh, pressure then it's uh, it is tough so back bar this is where it gets spicy we're actually running the maelstrom's perfected ice staff now hear me out so this is defending with a berserker and enchantment again to increase our healing and our weapon spell damage so between our web our between our enchantment arm and back bar we get 350 weapon spell damage and then Front bar again, we're gonna get another 600. So, this is like a raw thousand weapon and spell damage, which is like well, like 18% increased damage. Um, it's uh, it's actually pretty good. So, the reason we're running this, and I will show you an alternative to this as well. This is double ice staff, but you can also run ice staff front bar, dual back bar. All right, so this hits really hard, guys. I, I <laughs> You may say to yourself, well, how are you going to get them to stand in your blockade of frost, Horcrux, right? Like, how is this going to do, do any damage, right? So look at the tooltip. It's only like 866 frost damage on tooltip. But once you get this bad boy ramped up, right? And it, once you have it proc, this actually gets up to like 2,500 frost damage per second, right? <laughs> and this is our back bar when we swap to front bar. We'll have a little bit more weapon spell damage. And it, it hits really hard guys and this is every one second okay I, I know i'm jumping ahead of myself and getting into the skills but just, just just let me explain this hits so hard this is imagine a dot hitting 5k every two seconds because most dots in the game uh tick you know every two seconds you know for example you know destruct, uh, destructive clinch you know there's 11 000 frost damage over two seconds it takes every two seconds this is hitting for 2500 and <laughs> it's hitting for every second okay if you lock someone down in this, okay, you can run like destructive um, reach, uh, excuse me, destructive clinch on your front bar if you want to, to kind of apply the root and then uh, you can, you know, kind of lock them down into your, your, your blockade of frost. This has so many synergies. So not only when you apply it, you get a uh, 8,000 shield that blocks projectiles, which is awesome for Cyrodiil, but it's going to be ticking for 2,500 a second and it's going to pair really well with all the other status effects we have going on as well as one of the procs which we are going to cover it might be a little bit memey right it does have a snare to it you know just run out of it you will struggle against sorcerers and night blades they're just gonna just gonna run out of it right um but that's not to say you can't use it i do have some gameplay of dueling with it it actually does work um alternatively if you did not uh, want to go that route um you know the the meme route i think it's really strong i i, I think i think it's low-key slept on you can go the uh, Black Rose Prison. Uh, make, let's see if I have it here on me. Of course I don't. So we'll go to uh, inventory inside here. So uh, what these are going to do, your Black Rose Prison Swords. So this is, you're going instead of using uh, Ellie Drain on your back bar, you are going to be using a Spectral Cloak. It's Cloak uh, from your uh, dual wield skill line. Um, actually does hit pretty decently hard. Now I'm, I'm going to explain some of the synergy with this one as well. It's going to turn this in, in, into a Spectral Cloak, right? And it's, what it does, it's going to give you Black Rose Prison. It gives you 6% damage mitigation when you're being attacked by people. And it also is going to give you 6% damage amplification. And it's also going to do a pretty hefty dot uh, as well. So the beauty of this, if you run dual will, for example, you see here on my swords, I have a poison enchantment as well as a flame enchantment. Uh, this probably isn't uh, best in slot when it comes to enchantment wise but what it's going to do every single time your blade cloak ticks it is going to apply one of these enchantments from your back bar so even though you're on your front bar your frost staff pressing someone down as long as you have blade cloak active it's going to be triggering your back bar enchantments on whoever you're targeting and which is very very powerful so if you want to go that route it is there for you to experiment with arguably it is better than running the Maelstrom's Perfected Ice Staff, but I think this does do an absurd amount of damage when it does work, and especially if you're like me and you're solo, you're always getting dogpiled on, so it's very easy to keep people in this. Now, moving on to the monster set, we are actually running Roxka. Forgive me, I just don't have the correct traits for this, so I haven't golded it out yet, nor do I have the transmute stones for it. So Roxka is essentially the longer you're in combat you get a stack of dark light and it is going to give you stamina recovery health recovery as well as magic recovery 
at max stacks, um, which does take, you know, was it like 20 seconds to get to and something like that, uh, something of that nature, you do effectively get um, five, uh, a five piece retro vitality, which is like the best sustain set in the game. This is essentially having the best sustained stats you can on a two piece and you desperately need it on the Magden. There's no other way for me to get the magic recovery I needed as well as the stamina recovery I needed in order to make this build work without running Roxka. You can compensate possibly in your enchantments, you know, running uh, mag recovery glyphs or swapping to the Atro from your Munda Stone. But I found that this is the most consistent way to get the most bang for your buck. Now, you will struggle with your sustain at the start of the fight. You're going to pop a potion, it's going to feel like your, your sustain is going to taper off. But once the fight app, once the fight keeps on going, like Roxy is really going to ramp up and your sustain is going to completely level out. All right. And since there's a combat bug, you're always going to be stuck in combat anyway. So you're always going to have these stacks all the time. I swear I spend more time in combat than I, I actually do play in the game. It's it, it, it it's incredible. Anyway, um, next set we are running is Ice Furnace. This is the bread and butter of the build. Ice Furnace is awesome. So um, just a TLDR. I believe we are running three heavy three light and one medium yes that's correct three heavy three light one medium okay so ice furnace gives you massive magica crit chance weapon spell damage and when you deal frost damage you do an additional um, x amount of frost uh, fire damage to everyone around you and then this does stack off of your weapon spell damage this is why we're we're not stacking a lot of health so this is essentially 1500 a second right so this is like a cheap, uh, like a great value way of fire. But the beauty of it is every single time it ticks, it ticks a massive AOE. There's this cascading effect of crossfire that hits everyone and is always going to apply the burning stats effect when it procs. So for example, I don't have any fire abilities uh, on the bar, you know, frost staff, frost glyph. So I'm just going to activate Arctic Blast, right? Go to my front bar here and let it tick on the Ogrim. And you're gonna see pretty much every single time Frostfire procs, it's gonna proc the burning stats effect, right? Um, it's really, really good. You're always going to have this up on everyone. Of course, what I'm try trying to record this is, it it's not proccing off cooldown, but effectively, you're going to have the burning stats effect on pretty much everyone on you at all times. And not to get into uh, all the nitty gritty, but um, all the stats effects that apply on this build are considered quote unquote direct damage so anything that you can provide on the build that helps bolster your direct damage is also going to bolster all your stats effects so every single time this is procking it's doing damage and burning is ticking is doing damage everyone around you is burning or marinating it's a pretty good setup when it works uh, the only downside is locking people into your your semen that you toss on the floor it used to be if you had brittle on your opponent and you use the wall of ice when they would step into it, it would actually root them automatically. They since removed that mechanic because it was very oppressive. So this build has seen better days, you know, better patches, but it's still pretty viable. So next one beast is training for the health, Druid also for the health. My mythical choice is Sea Serpent's Coil. If you don't like the snare, you can run Death Dealer's Fate. Um, it's entirely up to you. I just prefer Sea Serpent's because it gives you major courage, which is going to stack with your already increasing Weapon spell damage from your Berserker enchantment, the Master's Ice Staff, having Major Curse on top of that is another 500, right? And you're also going to get Major Berserk. You have access to Minor Berserk, and this is also going to give you access to Major Berserk. And usually the problem with some builds have that you have to get to 100% health in order to proc Sea Serpent Squirrel. That's really no problem on this build because you're you're pretty much a heal bot even without running Polar Winds. Um, it's pretty awesome. And then last but not least, the two jewelry pieces we're running are Ice Furnace. This is the only way you can get three heavy, three light, one medium. You have to run Jewelry of the Ice Furnace. I highly recommend it. Um, I'm running Infused. Um, it's arguable that you can run Bloodthirsty on everything, but I prefer two Infused, one Bloodthirsty for my Jewelry setups. Now, let's hop over into the skills. Uh, let me go over Deep Fissure. I am notoriously awful at landing my bugs. I'll admit it. I played this game for nine years, a warden for like six. However long it's been out, and I still can't land my damn beetles. Um, there are some tips and tricks. So, beetles, wherever your character model is looking, is where the bugs are going to go. What you can do, you can wind up a medium attack right before the bugs hit. So, 
So we're going to boom, 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 and do a medium attack. And it'll actually turn your character model to whoever you're focusing. You see in that one hit, we got major, minor breach, brittle, slowed, chill, burning. There's a lot of stats effects going on there. So um, that's a little trip for uh, a little trick for beetles if you're having a difficult time landing it. I, I still mess it up. So um, the way this bar is set up, you can change your abilities however you want. I have all my long buffs on the back bar and all the short ones on the front bar. Leeching vines. This is an absolute necessity because this is the best heal you're going to get on the entire build. This is the best hot that you're going to have. It doesn't seem like it at first, but this heal that it provides as well as the minor life still is, is just better than any ability on the kit. It's almost better than spamming vigor every five seconds. Um, it is absolutely incredible. It's on my front bar because again, the buff only lasts 10 seconds. It needs to last like 15 or something. I, I feel like I have to apply this way too often. And if you're in a group, just keep in mind, this is a conal effect. This is going to apply to people in front of you. It's going to prioritize pretty much everyone in front of you besides you, right? So you need to make sure you're not looking at people when you use this because on your buff bar down here, you'll use it. It'll have, you know, your nine seconds. Like, oh yeah, I have it for 10 seconds. When, when in reality, you actually don't have it up for 10 seconds. It's on someone else. So uh, keep that in mind. Next is Bird of Prey. This is your snare immunity. It's going to give you major expedition. This is going to help offset the negative effects of Sea Serpent Squirrel, and it's also going to give you minor berserk, and it benefits from the passes from the Warden skill line. Frost Reach. I go with Frost Reach mainly because it does a lot more damage. Since this is our spammable, we need our spammable to do a lot of damage. Now, if you want to, uh, you can potentially take off Bird of Prey, and you can slot it with uh, whatever uh, that you want. Um, if you really want to get cancerous and stam check your opponents you'll swap destructive reach to destructive clinch okay and and then run instead of your bird of prey you run the crushing shock um as your spammable um that way when you throw down your wall of ellie and you activate clinch it locks them in it and then you can send them after with your arctic blast so you really stam check your opponent pretty frequently if you want to go that combat um th that combo route the thing is it is going to be very mana intensive so just keep that in mind um, I do have Resolving Vigor on the front bar, since Resolving Vigor is a snapshot ability. Um, again, I, I have it on my front bar because it's a short buff, you always need to keep this up. And my weapon spell damage is higher on my front bar, so I put Vigor on my front bar, and I don't think I need any other offensive pressure on my front bar, so here it is. I do have Dawnbreaker Smiting. There are Fighter's Guild Passes that come into play, which is very handy, and since everyone's a vampire. I also forgot to mention I am Vampire Stage 3. Pardon for that. Since everyone's a vampire, this is only hit everyone uh, extremely hard. All right. Uh, back bar, running Lotus Blossom. All your light and heavy attacks are going to heal you, and this is going to be your source of uh, major prophecy, increasing your spell uh, crit chance by 10% on both bars, you know, as well as your crit healing. A back bar is going to be Arctic Blast. You don't want to spam this too often. You really don't have to, assuming you keep all your buffs up and you keep your, your, your healing going. Um, this is kind of like an oh crap button and it does have a delayed stun which you can time with some pretty good burst instead of Dawnbreaker you want to run something like Ice Comet catch your opponents off guard. Uh, you can definitely do that and this is really strong because every single time this ticks this is applying the brutal status effect. So take a look at uh, old Greg over here like you just take a look and say like, every, every two seconds it ticks it, it reapplies it. So this actually does do a lot of damage. Um, it may not seem like it but the chilled status effect especially when you're taking a look at your passives, uh, your, your chilled stats effect um, does hit um, pretty dang hard. So the Glacial Presence passive increases the damage of your chilled stats effect by a thousand. Again, we are applying this so often it goes under the radar. You know, for example, we'll take a look at the good old Ogrim here. I'm just going to do some light attacks um, just with our spammable, right? And we're going to kind of take a look at the uh, DPS comparison of how much the, the chilled stats effect you know, actually does. Um, it, it does decent, just the stats effect alone from the spammable, including your light attacks, frost fire, you know, you know burning, everything progging is like 15% of our damage. Um, it, it does stack up, it is very deceptive. So uh, let's go ahead and finish uh, covering the rest of the abilities. So we do a blue betty. Um, I spam this pretty much on cooldown. Every single time you spam a uh, animal companion ability, you actually do get healed from it, which is pretty nice. 
Um, if there's like a, say if I'm, I'm fighting a, a mag stork or something, I see a um, vicious curse on me, I'll actually spam Betty to just remove the curse. It's completely free to cast, and you do get a lot of Magicka over a minute. I, I, I think in, in a minute's time, you got like 10,000 Magicka for this, and this is also your source of uh, major brutality, major sorcery, increasing your weapon spell damage by 20%. All right. And then Ice Fortress, this is going to be your minor protection as well as your major resolve, giving you 6k resistances across the board for 30 seconds. And then again, we've already covered Blockade of Frost. And last but not least on the back bar, Northern Storm. This is a very, very oppressive ultimate. Um, it really is. If you can stay up on someone, which isn't difficult because you're snaring them by 40%, you have Major Expedition, even a Sea Serpent Squirrel Prox. It's not difficult to stay up on people. This does hit like a truck, and while the storm is active you do have major protection which is going to reduce your incoming damage by 10 percent so with all of this together it is a very very strong build you can run this in solo group play you can run this in battlegrounds it's especially strong in battlegrounds because frostfire really pops off i know i keep calling it frostfire but the set is called ice furnace uh that's it just sounds a lot cooler that way i think in the thumbnail i think i think i have four frost you know four crux four frost eh, you get it Hopping over into the champion points, so in the blue tree, I'm rocking Cleansing Revival, Mastered Arms, Abiding Auras, and Ironclad. So Abiding Auras is going to buff Ice Furnace, it's going to buff your Beetles, Northern Storm, Dawnbreaker, pretty much the only thing this doesn't buff is some of the status effects as well as your spammable. It's not a big deal. Mastered Arms, again, this is going to buff all your status effect procs, right? Uh, very important to have. Then Ironclad, you know, one defensive CP. Arguably, you could change Cleansing Revival to uh, something else, but with the presence of all of the current dot builds and how important it is to get up to 100% health in order to proc Sea Serpent's Coil, I think Cleansing Re Revival is a good like reset point to allow you to breathe and to allow yourself to get on the offensive, okay? So, hopping over into the red tree, we got Survival Instincts. This is going this, this is huge because we don't have a huge stamp pool. We only have like 15.5k. So, any passives you can have to help reduce the cost of stamina abilities you know dodge rolling breaking free blocking vigor oh that actually doesn't affect vigor but uh, you, you guys know what i mean um it's going to be very very helpful otherwise every now and then you will get stamp checked if you're not careful if you're roll dodging too much so pain refuge sustained by suffering this is really going to help out with your recovery because you always have a negative stats effect you can swap fortified for literally whatever you want um you probably want to put celerity on this instead of fortified i think upon further testing i was using celerity so celerity is going to give you the 10 percent movement increase uh, which is pretty good and it also does help offset the negative effects of sea serpent spoil and if you guys made it to this portion of the video here you go here's your screenshot that has everything that you need i try to hide this randomly in the video just to uh, you know, I know you guys are going to go through the timestamps, you know what I mean? Just kind of take a look at the sets for 15 seconds and piece the hell out. So if you made it to this portion of the video, um, here's everything that I'm currently running. So just screenshot this and uh, you should be good to go. All right, guys, uh, before I peace out, my green screen is looking uh, pretty bad over here to the right. You, you see Mario here. It's actually looking pretty terrible. But uh, I do have a secondary channel I'm going to start uploading on at the beginning of the year is an FPS channel. So if you enjoy Apex content, Overwatch, Halo, Fortnite, literally anything FPS related. I know X Defiance coming out and there's amalgamation of other things I'm going to play over on that channel. Um, the link is down in the description below. I would really appreciate the support to try to get a thousand subscribers on that channel. Once I start uploading, I'm hoping to have a thousand subscribers uh, before February. That, uh, that would be an awesome dream come true because I don't know if you guys know me, but I prefer FPSs over MMOs. It's just, uh, I don't know, you guys in the MMO community are uh, pretty cool, and I appreciate you. But yeah, thanks for watching until the end. And before I peace out, a huge and glorious shout out to my YouTube members. You guys are absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every single one of you. I do stream on Twitch like three, four times a week, as well as YouTube. So if you want to be notified for all that, guys, you know what to do. We got a like and sub button down there. My Twitch is also down in the description. So... I'm rambling at this point. I suck at outros. Uh, you guys have an absolute wonderful Merry Christmas, and uh, I'll see you on stream. Peace.